This is part three of the story of the tall knight. In this video, I'll be talking about his response to him flirting with the 16 year old girl. I will also be reviewing his 28 minute long YouTube video that was posted a few days before I came out with this information. And finally, I'll be briefly covering a long conversation I had with him today over Instagram about what he said about all of this. First off, here are just some of the text messages he sent to a 16 year old girl on Instagram, calling her gorgeous, your eyes are so full of innocence, just reject me already. I know this ain't gonna work. And yes, this girl had her age in her bio and the tall knight knew this. Here is the tall knight admitting that this conversation was 100% real and he knew she was 16. In my conversation with him today on Instagram, he admitted it as well to me saying it's not as wrong as everyone's trying to make it seem and saying that it's not illegal. Well, Guess what? Just because something's not illegal doesn't make it right. The power dynamic between an adult and a 16 year old who is barely driving, barely just got a credit card, a sophomore in high school is immense difference. The maturity difference is huge as well. Here's what the tall knight said about him texting minors a few months ago. I don't accept DMs from minors. Anyone who is underage, I block them immediately. Wow, isn't that interesting? The guy who said he blocks minors, he doesn't accept their DMs ever was flirting with a 16 year old. Who would have thought? Another thing he lied about was that these DMs lasted over the course of one day and then he blocked them. But the truth is these DMs lasted three days, June 29th to July 1st. And the 16 year old was the one who blocked him. I was talking to Tall Knight about this. He called the conversation appropriate, not at all gross or pedal like. Despite him talking exactly how predators talk to young girls, lusting over their innocence. He's old enough to be a sophomore in college and he's trying to talk to a sophomore in high school. So the tall knight lied about not talking to minors online. And this situation is compounded with him using a 15 year old girl's comment supposedly on accident to advertise his adult content on TikTok. This is also compounded with him replying to a 13 year old girl in his TikTok comment section, which he claims he forgot to check the age. This is also compounded with him calling one of his mods in his discord server cute. She was underage. All of these things he's admitted to and all of them he claims was just an accident. Before we move on to the YouTube video, he did stitch my part one yesterday. This man right here is the worst man on TikTok right now. And I'm gonna tell you guys, yeah, so it kind of looked like the Travis Scott apology video. He basically said, I've been misinformed and gaslighted and guilt tripped me because he said out he was a big fan of mine. He couldn't believe it. Anyways, now on to the YouTube video. It was 28 minutes long. Can you believe that? And it was posted a few days before my part one came out. And I'm going to first start off with naming the things he did not address in that video. He did not address the 16 year old. He did not address his comment to the 13 year old. He did not address people seeing his private parts on Patreon, minors. He did not address cheating on his girlfriend. His YouTube video was divided into three parts, going in order of scammer, transphobe, and groomer. We will follow that order. The first 10 minutes of this video is spent talking about his mental health and how it's in the dumps. Then he talks about how he blew up on TikTok and made a big bag. Personally, it felt like a whole big guilt trip. Here's my takeaway from the scamming part of the video. Going through a breakup and his sister took him under their care. They were living in the same apartment. He flew in his girlfriend, Kate. They were long distance. He told me that his sister told him no fooling around. And yet he chose to fool around. You know what they did. And in turn, his sister walked in on them and then kicked him out. It was because of his own actions that he got kicked out. If he was just more responsible and more gracious to the person letting him live with them, none of this would have ever happened. And again, I would like to point out this screenshot of him saying that he was never homeless and bragging about the riches he gained that his followers sent to him. He claims these are fake, but hasn't given me any proof whatsoever. Only his word. He also says he kept $30,000. The same night he was kicked out, his sister offered him to come back for a week to help him find an apartment before he had to leave. He rejected this offer. Now for the transphobe part of the video, he starts off this part by admitting, yes, he's a transphobe. And he apologizes for making the comment that he did. The comment in question was motivated because a trans artist was posting their song on TikTok and he was in the comments and he saw that everybody in these comments were supporting them and he did not like that. He decided to leave a hateful comment purposely misgendering this trans artist. This points to a deeper animosity towards trans people. He then apologizes for being transphobic, 
then says he's not transphobic, and then apologizes again. So it's not really clear what he's admitting to, or what he thinks he is. Now for the groomer part of the video. He admits to calling his mod cute in his Discord, saying that it wasn't sexual. This is a different girl from the 16-year-old he was DMing. Again, that's not addressed in this video. Then he claims that it was an accident that he responded to a 15-year-old to promote his adult content on TikTok. You would think that if you're promoting adult content, you better make sure the person you are replying with a video to is of age. And I quote, It was an 18-plus comment to make, so I assumed they were 18-plus. That's as far as he goes into the Patreon OnlyFans debacle. He doesn't address the minors who saw his private parts on them, nor does he address him replying to the 13-year-old. The end of this video is the most interesting. He talks about how his mom was a predator, arguing that because he was groomed, he couldn't be a groomer. While it is sad that his mom is this way, that logic doesn't hold up. You would think that his experiences would make him be extra, extra careful to make sure he's not inappropriate with minors. And yet, here are all these situations where this happens. But he's not careful. He hasn't been. He's been talking to 16 year olds. He's been advertising his content on accident to 15 and 13 year olds. And at the very end of the video, he apologizes for coming off as a pedophile. And that's a quote. Now, as you guys have probably noticed, there's been text messages between me and Tall Knight on Instagram scattered throughout this video. And I'm here to tell you that in the hour that I spent talking to him, the only proof that he could send me was that his Patreon was taken down because he wasn't allowed to have NSFW content on there because Patreon's not age restricted. Meaning minors saw his content and they did. Even yesterday, I saw comments of people saying, I looked up his Twitter and I didn't know what he had on there and I accidentally saw him. So they also saw his private parts, more minors. Anyways, what do you guys think of all this? It's a lot, this is my longest video ever. My second longest was yesterday's four minute video. What do you think of the tall night? Thanks for listening and as always, follow me for more.